Okay. We should be live. Hello, everyone. Hello. Let me see. Hello, peeps in chat. We can, I've got the pop-out chat so I can see you all. <laughs> Hopefully you can see the video playing in the background. Right, what we're going to do today is just talk a little bit about the halos. There's a lot of people been asking what they are, so they're obviously needing some more information from us. And we do still want vid uh, people making videos and bringing our attention to them, because they're very special. You know, keep recording them, guys. You can see the ones here that we've uh, been sent. Uh, some are off one conference. 900 cool picks and a few other people you all get mentioned underneath you know you all get the, you all get the credits for it <laughs> but yeah, yeah keep them coming. Go on, I'm, say, I'm just gonna say hey to everybody um tommy lev daniel um sandra melanie i just wanted to say hey thanks a lot for coming so go ahead i'm sorry to interrupt that's okay well yeah thanks for coming guys we know you like these they're very special and um, keep recording them because they are very special um if you haven't been following our research too closely what they are is part of the projector system that projects the the lunary we call the sun we're going to prove that and if you watch our 12 gates video you'll get um, a bit more technical breakdown and a lot of explanations of uh, what the research is involved into coming to these conclusions and we are going to go deeper in the video we're making now called Wonderland. So if you're not sure about them, definitely watch our 12 Gates video. Can you drop the link to that in the chat one in case anyone hasn't seen it? Which one is it? Uh, this 12, 12 Gates. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, better get, better get that in there. So, yeah, they want to watch the technical breakdown uh, side of it. That's the way you need to be looking. Yep. Um, oh, crap. Tommy, Dan, Mel. Sandra, who else is here? <laughs> Big Nick's is in and out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Tommy, Jamie Tommy. Brown. Liv. Usual suspects. <laughs> Always. But that's good. Yeah. I like them. Good peeps. Yeah, we're getting to the point now, guys, where we can name all the individual parts of these. So you'll get the ancient terminology for these and the modern terminology. That's uh, how confident we are with this research. So yeah, keep keep your eyes peeled on them skies. Now there is different types of halo you can actually record. These ones here are normally called what you what the mainstream call them a twenty two degree sun dog halo. There's also a forty six degree one which I haven't seen personally. I would love to see someone capture that one. You see a bit more with that, and to me it looks like. There's other luminaries involved in what's creating what you're seeing. Um, I didn't have time to add the, the 46 degree one to this, and I didn't have permission to use the clip anyway, so I thought I better not. But uh, if you search for 46 degree halo on YouTube, you will see what I mean, and some amazing imagery of them. And it does look like the sun with Venus or something above it. So it's probably a sunset, and Venus is... In the vicinity or one of the luminaries anyway something is definitely above it that looks like another luminary and with our research um it's kind of proven ptolemy's work correct which does the describe the um copernican globe system because uh ptolemy factored in the motions of what we called epicycles we'll go into that a bit deeper in the wonderland video but basically he's taking into account not just the sun but the projector that's moving the sun it's relating to the movements of the projector uh, that's basically what you're really looking at this is a projection and part of the projector is showing that shouldn't be hopefully you're understanding this information if not if not doesn't matter you know you can go to the 12 gates or the wonderland video and release that for more technical breakdowns of what we're looking at or feel free so, to uh, ask questions yeah. We're always around for questions to answer this stuff. Yeah, definitely ask questions. So if you've got any questions, guys, put them in the chat now because we're going to put the chat up so we can see it. Yeah. Also, when you go to find these things, 
Now, when I've had the most success catching the halos, which I catch a lot of them, I do drive around a lot for my job. Um, so I'm always outside and knowing what I know, I'm always looking at the sky. So first of all, you got to look at the sky. Second of all, what I've found is when they chemtrail, when they chemtrail and the clouds get really thin and wispy and they cross over the sun and the sun area, it illuminates these halos. Um, I've caught many of them doing that. And I think China, she's got the same thing going on. I always see her very thin, wispy clouds uh, stretched across the area. You know, thick cloud coverage is going to cover it all up. But when you get those thin ones, the halos will pop through. You'll see the line, you'll see the sun, you'll see the nodes. Well, so. We do want you to do, guys, if you, if possible, try and uh, do a time lapse of them as well, because you will actually catch it moving if you use the time lapse. You'll see the whole halo rotating at, with the sun. <laughs> so if you can catch that, that would be awesome. <laughs> we haven't got many of those. But yeah, time lapse. If you see one, try and time lapse it. And yeah, you'll see, you'll actually detect the motion of the whole thing. Which is what yeah. we're going to prove anyway, you know, because we can see it's doing that. We know what it's doing. We know what it is. And we know what it isn't. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, time lapse. But yeah, one's right, you know, the chemtrail in, they're trying to hide this, you know. If you look at uh, China's view on the bottom right there, you can see all the chemtrails, but you can still see the halo showing through it. You know, they're hoping, it seems they're hoping to hide them. Now, there's a few reasons why they might be showing. You know, one's obviously temperature. We think really cold temperature plays a part in revealing these. And certain chemtrails that they spray in the heavens, like uh, barium. Barium illuminates a geomagnetic field line from pole to pole. So basically what you're looking at is electromagnetics. Barium has been used to basically map the sky. <laughs> so, you know. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We should, we need to take the opportunity and map it ourselves as well. This is what they're doing and this is what we need we need to do. Yep, and we can from ground. If every person, you know, pays attention when they are chemtrailing. Especially I've I've managed to find a lot of them um, closer to dusk hour. You know, I don't know what it is about the dusk hour uh, in my area. But when we get closer to the evening time, they really seem to illuminate when the chemtrails are being put out. So I'm not real sure why that is, but I just want everyone to understand um, how you find these things. Because a lot of people don't see them. Yeah, there's times. Yeah. There's times when you can see them, and like I said, it's when the chemtrails are very thin and wispy. If you look at all these pictures, there's a very light layer of chemtrails, and that's when, for sure, you'll always you know, see the sun. But the nodes, when you see the nodes, then you can capture the ring, at least for me. It's, I don't always see the ring. I see the nodes more than anything. There's also um, two different things to check in the heavens, guys. Uh, you've got stationary halos, which is going to be like what you're seeing there with the sun's on, a complete circle of halos with uh, nodal points on, but no luminary. Now, these stationary ones, the best example we can show you of that is the one captured by Crow 777. He calls it the lunar wave. Now, what it is is basically a stationary halo in the heavens and the moon passing by in the background is illuminated. It's kind of showed it going across the face of the moon. So keep your eye out for that one as well. It's another nice capture. That's the only one I've seen. I've seen one or two, I think. One by The first one was by Crow, and then one by another guy. And I would say there's probably other people capturing them by now. We've also seen, also seen the same off uh, Jupiter and one of the other major luminaries. I can't remember which one it was. But they're on my channel. If you check my channel, you will see where I've shown the... the two passing by it's basically a circle you know so you get one side of it showing then the other as it moves across the luminary and you'll see some nice examples than a, a cgi animation i made to show you basically what's going on you know a stationary hill in the sky and these are the ones we related to, uh, to the ones called seraphims from scripture 
you look at some of our scriptural decodings, you'll see how we relate them to the seraphims or the fiery ones, as they were known. <laughs> now, the fiery ones, you know, obviously that's going to be relating to uh, radioactive materials and lava, which again, you're going to have to watch the 12 Gates video for a better breakdown of what we're looking at. Tommy said, twice this summer just passed, I watched Kim trailer planes vanish into thin air. Then he asked, is there a possible layer they can come a go from? Come and go from. I've seen a few videos like that, and it's just a trick of light, really. You know, if the light's not reflecting off any parts of the aircraft, it's going to look appear to vanish. It's just when light's catching it, you really notice it. So I have seen a few videos like that, but I've never commented on them, you know. Uh, obviously, thin cloud might help obscure them. But yeah, I think it's a trick of the light and the angle of the aircraft to your perspective. It seems to just look like it's vanished. <laughs> It's, uh, I think it's because there's no reflective surfaces being shown to your direction. That's what the problem is. What I've noticed um, the last couple days, see, for like four days, we haven't had any chemtrails. But I've seen lots of planes. I'm wondering if they haven't figured out how to put the stuff out without it showing as much. I don't know that for sure. It's just a thought. Um, but I like last night I saw like five planes all going in different directions coming up. And it just looked weird. There shouldn't have been that many dang planes. I mean, <laughs> you know, always, well, especially there's that. A, there's always a fleece of them, notice, because when they're coming over where I live, you know, you see three or four of them side. Well, I was uh -huh. going to say side by side, but, you know, not close, not close to each other. But they are flying a formation side by side, probably a mile or so apart. So you maybe not seen all the ones that's doing it. Mine, they were following each other. So I had two, one up higher and one down lower, and it was following that one. And then I had two more coming from the side, and they seemed to be following each other. And then there was the fifth one that was just kind of off on its own, which, you know, maybe that was a real plane not a chemtrail plane, but none of them were leaving the lines. I haven't seen any of the the thick heavy uh, trails for like four days now I actually had blue skies which is weird well I would say they can predict to what time these are going to be revealed and that's what you know they're doing it by timed events I would say mm -hmm. in a certain location it seems to show more than it does in other locations so it suggests there's something going on in the underworld doesn't it <laughs> what they're yeah. trying, to cover, trying to cover up in the sky as yeah. above so below guys that's what you're looking at and that's why they, the heavens is happening below. Yep, and that's probably why they um, do a lot of chemtrailing in the evenings here at my area. You know, every area is going to be a little different based on whatever's going on in that area. But in, you know, the middle of America, I really capture a lot of them in the evenings going into dusk. And they chemtrail a lot then. They like to blow us up at, in the evenings. Not to say they don't do it in the daytime, but they really do like to start it in the evenings a lot around here, which, you know, whether they're trying to cover it or map it or both, I don't know. But they're definitely Absolutely. making it easy for me to see them. <laughs> yeah, but only because you're, <laughs> you're looking up. <laughs> you know what's there. Yeah. 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 You've got to look up and catch it. I don't think they can hide it. Even the chemtrails don't hide it very well. Unless, you know, they've blank, completely blanketed the sky with them, which takes a bit of doing. <laughs> it's a big sky. So they have to use, you know, they're using winds as well. They'll do it um, downwind so it blows towards it kind of thing. Tommy said, the only time I get a cloudy sky is the only days these bloody planes are around. Yeah, once in a while I get real fluffy clouds, but most of the time it's these thin, wispy chemtrail clouds. And Mel said they spray at night in Mississippi. See, they do to here too. And you're just not too far from me. You're more south of me. But I think we would be getting similar um, sightings in our skies, Mel. I mean, you're not too far off. Same with Miss China. I see the same skies she shows on her videos, but mine seem to be further away and south. Well, that makes sense because she's south of me. So these things are pretty big you know what are what are they what did you guys say six miles around and that what jimbo said 
Yeah, we estimate that the halo to be about six miles in diameter, but that might change, you know, depends on the altitude of it, because it is gain, gaining and decreasing altitude depending where in the world you are. It, you know, I remember our, uh, our tour video where we had it going up the sides, across the zenith at the top, and then down the other side again. So, yeah, yeah. there's elevation and playing a part in there. So the, it depends where you are, you know, obviously sunset is going to start looking lower in the, on the horizon. It's not just going into the distance, it is actually losing altitude as well, going towards the west gates. See, when I see them, they're usually getting, the sun's getting lower. It's descending, so. Yeah, Globers would argue that's their perspective. <laughs> Even though they deny perspective, they, they would argue it's perspective. But yeah, we do think it is uh, losing altitude as it comes down towards the far west. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, so yeah. Keep, these, uh, keep them videos coming in, guys. We want to see more of these. You know, yep. we're not too we're not too worried about mapping them or the location. Obviously, you know, the sun's got one that moves with it. Yeah, but if you do find others, you know, it might reveal other stationary ones that are passing by. The the rarer ones that are hard to find. The station, stationary ones are referred to as seraphim in scriptures. One's done a few overlays that will surprise you with as well in the Wonderland video that we're making. That'll be out soon as well. <laughs> yeah, the next video at Wonderland should be pretty eye-opening for the people that maybe don't understand and probably just downright amazing for the ones that do. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a given, isn't it? It's the obvious. Yeah. This is a, a technical system. Very high tech. You know, and not saying that entities aren't involved, and I'm not saying they are, but these are definitely projections, and the ones I see are in the same areas every day. You know, I'm always capturing them in the same direction, in the same general area. Mel's asking, could they have darkened the sun and put up a simulator? Is it possible a dark sun receives the real sun? It's always going to be the real sun projector. Now, what it's projecting should be the sun particles. But if man's messing around with this technology, then that can change. That would be the worry, you know, if, if they're playing around with the sun projector then, yeah, I would expect to see changes in the heavens. But um, a simulator, no, you don't need a simulator when you've got the original technology at your fingertips because they only have, you know. When you and think you about think... where your taxpayers' money is going, it's not going on space projects, guys. It's going on reverse engineering creator glory projects. That's the reality of what we're looking at. This is the seriousness of it. Yeah. And if we think in terms of alchemy, if they've um, gotten down and, and able to fiddle with these these uh, technologies and they learn how to add you know elements or whatever to them it would change the the heat of our sun um, the appearance you know it's it's alchemetic yeah definitely alchemy playing a part as you've seen with the hieroglyph uh, decoding you can see various mixtures of things in those decodings. Now, I couldn't decode them. I could just recognize straight away what uh, the Eye of Horus was, and that's how it was easy to decode, just by looking at it and knew what it was, what it represented. And when I looked at some of the imagery with the birds, obviously being high frequency, the uh, the hot coals, the, the, you know, there's waveforms there. It's showing you it's an uh, alchemic electrical process going on. Very, very high-tech stuff. And, you know, historically and geo petrol and hieroglyph uh, research is shown, we, we all knew this. Everyone depicted these images everywhere. They knew what it was, accepted it and worked along with it. And it does seem up to about the Egyptian times, man, se man had seemed to harness it pretty well. So when you think about it, all man's, all man's done really is re reverse engineer what they found and make derivatives of it. And that's where we're at today with our technology. You've got all our technology today to thank for coming from the underworld, in my opinion. Do you say one? 
um, I was just reading Tommy's comment. He said Germany and many others have had patents on sun simulators since the 50s, though. Yeah, well, guess where they're going to be using them? Somewhere, well, the, the sun ain't shining, <laughs> for want of better wording. But yeah, they, they're obviously using them down at Antarctica in the south of South Antarctica. Remember, you know, we're looking at uh, our realms, something on something much larger, going by the grid and map we're using. So, you know, if the sun's not going in those locations, they're going to need artificial lighting. So that's where I would say they would be using the sun simulator. How on the, out, Egypt, on the outskirts of the realm. Oof, you said no how idea, old is Egypt? How old is, how old is anything? Either. All the timelines, you haven't. know. All the timelines are different. Doesn't matter which religion you look at. Everyone's got a different time, so none of them are the same. Yeah, the oldest, least, the oldest is the Jewish one, is it not? Yeah, I think so. Ain't that around eight thousand? I think it's six thousand, six, six, seven, seven, somewhere around there. If I but had you know, to guess, we know that's right. <laughs> right. If I had to guess, I would like to think it's right around there, six thousand some hundred years. Um, basing it on uh us passing through zodiac signs that's what i'm basing it on you know they carbon date things and they really mess it up i've said this before and i'll keep saying it water and things being submerged would make things look older it would make them appear older um, things that are preserved without a lot of air or water or elemental um, interference would appear younger so Carbon dating, you can't go by that, but when you look at zodiacal signs, zodiac signs and how we pass through them and what is here on earth to show us we've been through them, we have um, a ram, a bull, and a fish. So if it's true that those are 2,000 years each, well, we went through 6,000 years there and now we've entered Aquarius. I don't think that we just entered Aquarius. I think we entered Aquarius in 2012 when the Mayan calendar said we were entering a new age. That's that's how I think about it. Not saying that it's accurate what whatsoever, but common sense wise that's what it kind of tells me is we're a little over six thousand years old. Yeah. Well you know, we'd be guessing. <laughs> I am well, guessing. Say, well, yeah, it's, it's in the, it's it me, in the me one. I'd be guessing as well, yeah. Six, seven thousand years old, who knows? The the pyramids themselves, you know, I, I think they're part of the construct, a part, a part of the build, as are many of the other ancient temples, and they were built locally for people to come and learn and research. I think uh, a lot of these sites we've been looking at, they do look like um, university sites, like yeah. the ones in Italy that you, uh, do you want to go through the Italy ones once, have a quick talk through them, so um. let them know what you've seen, and yeah, we looked up the, we looked up different temples of the luminaries. Okay, so we looked up the temple of Jupiter and Mars, and each each planet has its own temple. You know, and when we zoomed in and looked at them, and they were all right there in a bunch. You know, um, they're always in a bunch together. They looked they looked like college campuses, broken down destroyed college campuses probably where people went to learn how these um, luminaries in our world worked um, Tommy asked what if they've had computer tech all along I think they have I don't think we were primitive at all like that yeah little we'll use our little saber-tooth tiger teeth to dig holes I don't think so <laughs> well look at the anti-capering mechanism you know that right there there's some amazing piece of technology it's a hand crank computer that can tell you where you are anywhere in the world and not only that can predict past pre current and future eclipses you know this that's that would be kind of impossible on a globe model wouldn't it it's ridiculous so yeah you know they were advanced advanced a lot more than they tell us definitely they just depicted it differently in different languages. Uh, so it does make it harder to, you know, to pull it out of um, the information you're looking at. But you can pretty much guarantee everything the Instagram has been telling you is just total bullshit. Yeah. It, re it really is, you know, geology, geopetronidoglyphs. We've looked, we've looked through everything and everything they're saying there is is turning out not to be. You know, lava, volcanoes, there's a lot more going on. It's a big... 
techno mechanical process going on down there. That's what our research is revealing. Yeah. It can't work yeah. any other way. Even if they hadn't, you know, straight up stole, stolen the technology like nowadays, um, they just they knew how it worked and they knew how to get the energy from the earth and they knew alchemy. So they knew a lot of things that we just aren't taught anymore. They knew exactly how this stuff worked. This is what they were taught. There wasn't any mainstream mumbo jumbo lying to everyone. You know, um, you know, things were probably just a lot different back then because everyone knew there was a creator. Everyone knew that this stuff was below. Everyone mapped it. All the different religions and countries and stuff, they all have different depictions of this um, in their own language, which would be after the language languages were separated as stated in scriptures so even if they didn't have like computers and and stuff like that they had their own technology which is the world technology they took over they stole it they called it their own they invented different little pieces for us to have of it and they called it their own and they've waged war on the world and all the countries where this stuff lies and they've taken it, killed anyone who didn't want to conform or go along with um, this takeover of the creation. Elaborating more on the takeover one, we do think it was probably when this large flood took place. You know, there'd be a, a bit of a vacuum there, power vacuum, and I would say that's probably when they went for it, because it's strange, everyone seems to have stopped depicting all this at the same time. It had to be something very cat catastrophic for it to stop. And of course, wars and invading armies and things that's going to put you off. You know, the Spanish army basically burnt a lot of the mains, um, scriptures. That's you know, this is what was going on. They were going around the world, tearing it to pieces and handing out Bibles and saying, You will now believe this, <laughs> exactly. And it's never stopped, has it? You know, they're still handing, handing yeah. the bullshit out, saying, You know, I'm not saying the Bible's bullshit, I'm saying they've made it read differently to what it originally did and there's so many books missing from the bible there's just not much of it left to decode but you can still get the same decoding from that as you can from the book of enoch uh geo petro hieroglyphs the nazca lines real world data it's, it's all there it's just it's just hidden the technology and how the technology works so you can see why they didn't want the didn't want to canonize the book of enoch and you can see why they removed a lot of Bibles from the Bible, well, a lot of books from the Bible. It's just too revealing. It has to be. Let's say hi to Tom in China. Glad you stopped in China. Hi, Tom. Hi, China. Hey, Dan. Yeah, Halos, uh, China. So just what you needed, some information on Halos. So, yeah, be sure to watch this video if you've missed any. And the 12 gates video if you want to go deeper. <laughs> and Wonderland if you want to sink like a brick all the way to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Brain's too full. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take them down in layers, shall we? <laughs> so, yeah, the, the flood, I agree. Um, the flood is definitely when we lost all this. You know, I made kind of a makeup video and put it on my channel, but something like that is probably what happened. You know, the flood occurred and everyone that did survive probably went into, you know, caves or something like that or in caves on mountains or, you know, wherever they could survive. If the elite of the time knew this was going to happen or caused it to happen, they would have also known to put all this information safely somewhere. Um, even if it took, you know, 100 years for the waters to recede enough, and I'm not saying that's true, I'm just making up a number, but the information would be there for the next generation to come out of hiding and get these places and areas before anyone else could. You know, as other people started to come out of hiding and build their little villages, well, they'd just slaughter them. And that's exactly what happened when we go back and read our histories, especially of Europe. And then it came over to the Americas. 
you know, but Europe we hear about a lot. All the kings and queens and stuff that just went from village to village and slaughtered everyone, overtook the land, made the men slaves, skewed and messed up their bloodlines and their DNA. That all happened. You know, you got to wonder why. Why would they do all this? That's just evil. Well, it was to get these areas and take this technology. That's why. Yeah, and historically, um, your elders, your tribal chiefs, your kings, queens, royals, etc., etc., all used to take great pride in depicting how this realm works. You can see it in the geopetron hieroglyphs; it's everywhere. But yeah, once they took pride, you know, they took great pride in it, and now it's all hush hush. No, oh, you're on a globe now. You're a monkey on a spinning ball. <laughs> I don't think so. Tommy said, I have the CN Tower, the world's largest freestanding structure here in Toronto with its Vesca Pisces at the base and 1,776 steps right on the waterfront, free electricity and billing to wash clothes. That's freaking awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, yeah, I was just going to comment on that. Um, you know, obviously cities and certain buildings are built precisely where they need to be on the grid because what you're looking at is ley lines i was talking our back chat earlier with uh, chris there is a, a roman baths down near bristol and it still today heats the water from below so i was asking chris to take a shovel down below the roman baths and have a look at actually what's heating the water because you know it's going to be something simple below that that they're using to heat water and it's got to be sitting on top of the ley line ley line you know it's simple plug in so all your cities that they're on this grid uh, for a reason in these locations. It's for easy plug-in down below. You know, if you want free power and energy, you've got to find the right location to plug in down below. So this is what they take into account before they even consider building a city. That's the kind of scale of the operation you're looking at. Romans knew it, you know, it's never changed. So what it's telling you is, you know, there's free energy, free heat, and free everything, as was intended, you know. the. Whoever created this, you know, we've, we've even debated the creator in our, in our chats. You know, we're not going to say we know who or what the creator is, but if this was created and the blueprints laid out in the NASC, uh, sorry, the, the blueprints laid out in the NASC lines and everywhere else around the world to show you how it works. So it was a given to humanity. It was given to us to know how it works and manage it and all be part of it, not be excluded from it. That's basically what's going on. You know, it's been private and everyone else is not included. So there's a small party in charge of running the show, it seems. I'm going to put the 12 gates again in the chat. It's a real good Yeah, video to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should watch that 10 times. <laughs> you, you learn something every time as well, probably. There's so much information in that video. Definitely. And read the Egyptian text for yourself. It's the Egyptian pyramid text, um, the 12 gates or the 12 hours. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, there's another thing we need to stress. This is not a Pac-Man map. It is not a teleporting sun. The sun gets to the west. It sets. It shuts down. It then has to make its way back in the underworld, back to the east, as told in scripture and by the Mayans and everyone else. There is a return path it has to take that go through the 12 gates. Uh, these would be the 12 chakras. We've identified them as the 12 chakras. And if they're all healthy, there is a 13th. So <laughs> we're going to go a bit more deeper into that one in the next video. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a 4D map. It's not teleporting. It shuts down and the projector has to make its way back to the east, ready for the next sunrise. So that's what you're really looking at in this model. You know, no fan, no fantasy 4D, no looping sun. But actually, there, you know, it does loop. There is a 24-hour loop in the north where it does a 24-hour sun. We've looked at that. It does work. We've shown how it works with this model, and with this 12 gates, we've shown how this, how it doesn't, how the, when it's not in the 24-hour sun, how it's making its way back to the east in the underworld. And this is what the Egyptian 12 gates depicted perfectly. It's all it took you on the journey to show you how it works. So that's that was the level of intelligence and knowledge up to Egyptian times. So, you know, everyone was still learning it back in those times. And that's when everything changed and we were starting to start getting told lies. But not anymore. We can yeah. see it now, can't we? We can see what's going on. Absolutely. And I think it's awesome 
that China is taking her time all day to capture this halo traveling across the sky each hour. That's awesome. And if we could get everyone to kind of do that one time, we would have the different locations of these things um, over each state, you know, or at least the areas. If these things are six miles wide, and there's 144,000 of these things. We have a lot of information to gather if we want a true map of our our skies. Not all of them is projecting a luminary mind, uh, but yeah, there is a lot doing here. The halo kind of role, the shepherd role, which is what the uh, the Egyptian ones depict basically. You know, the King Tutankhamun. That's the leader of a group of angel technologies that are projecting their solitary halos in the heavens. That seem to be used for guidance. And yeah, Will Sorin's asking, what do you guys think of a sun on the hollow inner earth? That's what we were just saying, uh, Will. Yeah, the, the sun has a return path in the underworld. It's moving around in the underworld. What you're seeing in the sky is the projection from the projector. It's a projector in the underworld and you're seeing the projection in the heavens. And as mind you, below. That as this happens in the underworld, it, it might light up down there too. This, this is a lot of alchemy going on, a lot of processes. Oh, yeah. And yeah, that could right. explain right. the sun in the hollow earth. People that have hollow earth beliefs, this is hand in hand. I mean, it really is. If, if people would watch our videos and understand what we're talking about, these hollow earth believers would understand that this is what's going on. It's not a globe or hollow, but these are layers. These are layers below that are doing different things. The lower the layer is, probably the further away the luminary would appear. Now, scripturally speaking, what Ezekiel was trying to describe when he mentioned a wheel in a wheel is exactly what you're seeing in the heavens there. That's the projection from this wheel in a wheel. We're going to go deeper into that in Wonderland. But this is what Ezekiel was trying to describe, a particle accelerator, basically. A wheel in a wheel. And you'll get that when you see the next video we put out understand exactly why you said it yeah. yep but the egyptian pyramid text the 12 hours um, that goes through the entire process of the sun's return path you know during the northern um uh winter time in the summer they get the 24 hour sun up there hey jason I think so too, Tommy, with the bigger heads, probably had a bigger pineal gland, you know, they had um, probably a higher con a higher conscience that was more. Well, the human Egyptians connected. just kind of moved in, remember, you know, we've inherited all this before us was giants and titans. We can't forget them because they exist everywhere. You can, mainstream's going to hide the giants, but. You know, they've definitely had a role, uh, played a part in this. On the scale of this, you know, you're talking giants or titans taking part in constructing this. It's too big a scale for humans. CERN, like, CERN might look big, but CERN is just a baby compared to the originals, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> so. <laughs> but they come in all sizes. They would come in all sizes, doing different things. Yeah, you know. different, different roles, different frequencies, yeah. Different amount of nodes. I mean, not yeah, on the sun, but like on the no, actual... I think, I think you will notice on the sun one as well, depending what, what's going on and where it's at. And if it's going through a cleaning cycle or, you know, when or where you've captured it might make a difference. I, I know I've seen the one with less nodes on. So it suggests, you know, the sun weren't powered up for some reason. You know, it might just be part of its process. But usually you wow. see about eight nodes. If you can get a full halo, there's usually about eight nodes there, isn't there? Or the sun and seven around it. Yeah. So, like, what you mean is if something was uh, kicked on to, say, do it was cleaning at that time, then something would be lit up differently than if it was just, say, traveling? Yeah. Yeah, I think something like that's going on, you know, because people, I've seen a couple of videos where there's not the same amount of nodes, so it suggests... Part of the part of it's not activated, you know, shut down, or it's not doing something during that stage of that process. So yeah, it's a, it's obviously switching things on and off as it's moving around, and obviously it's getting to certain areas 
where perhaps it'll have to do a dump, you know, a cleaning cycle as it's going through somewhere, or we have to take things into, into consideration what, you know, what's doing down below. So, yeah, the only thing I can think of is obviously it's involved in various processes and it's not all the time we've got all the eight nodes activated. Yeah. Depending on what it's doing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and certain you know, areas of the world would be dump sites because there's massive amounts of volcanoes there. In other areas, there aren't. Where I live, we don't have any volcanoes. And the lava tubes, you know, it's, uh, the ones that's in use. I think you'll know the ones in use is always going to be warm there. And they do seem yeah. to flow back towards the equator and exit out towards the west in most cases, don't they? As you see on the, on the mimic map, guys, you know, this ring of fire doesn't exist. It's really a line of fire, we call it, because it goes east to west right across the equator, and it's it's lit up. Um, and obviously, that's the radioactive volcanic uh, lava that's flowing. I think that's where the heat's coming from. This big, the, the lake of fire is probably right below the equator. Yeah. And as the bands put it nicely, we well, might as well mention this as well. <laughs> the the stars and the stars, all the luminaries come out at night to show the humans the map of the underworld. Uh, we'll probably do a little talk about that sometime in the future, uh, what it relates to. Uh, what, what, what you're looking at with the Milky Way, you know, the Milky Way may very well be just a mirror image of what the what's below the equator. So yeah, as the bands say, it's a map of the underworld. That kind of that decodes really nice. That still to look at it, but yeah, that's it. Does make a lot of sense when they put it put it like that. Yeah. Keep them videos coming, guys. We want to see more halos? <laughs> They're beautiful, aren't they? Lovely sight to see. I don't see many. Yeah, I think I've seen three. In the last two or so years, never seen any before then. And it, I, at the time of seeing them, I did not realise it was something to do with flat Earth. You know, this was before I, I found flat Earth and got into all this. But I've seen them myself before. I've, the drone captured one, and I've captured two of my mobile phone. I'll have to dig them out and make a video. <laughs> yeah. Not to say, you know, just a couple of nodes or something like that. I haven't seen the full halo like you guys are getting to see. That one right there by Miss Will. Is that what it says in the middle? That one is really good. That, you see both wheels. <laughs> Which one? The one in the middle on the screen. Oh, uh, Miss Willie. Yeah. That's uh -huh. uh, one from Vietnam. Yeah. I asked him, I'll if I could use the clip. He said, yeah, certainly. Yeah, nice clip. I've seen one from China China uh, recently as well. That was a nice one. There's a lovely one in Sweden when they're all skiing on a mountain slope, but I think you have to pay for the rights to use that one, so I've never used it. Tommy said the Great Rift. <laughs> yep, the Great Rift, yeah. <laughs> there it is in the sky, and it's just a mirror image of what's below, really. It's showing you the underworld. That's what the Whitmans tell us. The map of the underworld. Wow, lots of stuff going on there. there. You have to take it seriously, you know. Take what the men say seriously, they knew what they were talking about. Unlike today's uh, academia. Nazca lines, a couple of guys with sticks. Who were they kidding? <laughs> <laughs> with sticks. <laughs> It must have took them like 100 years then to remove a mountaintop with a stick. <laughs> and they spent 12 years on one master line. Oh, did you, uh, by the way, see Jay Dreamer's um, video that he put out the stream? No, not yet. Today. I didn't catch the stream. I caught the afterplay of it. But no, I think it was his last night. But um, he called Nevada or called um, the Grand Canyon and was asking a bunch of stuff and they gave him one around. I would say everybody should check that out. Um, they did admit ah, that right, yeah. I, I did 
did see the, I missed the video. I, seen, I remember I was in the pop up, but I was busy doing something at the time, probably making this video. You're looking at here, <laughs> probably. Yeah, seen that. Yeah. And, but I have seen other people mention what's going on there, and you know, they're getting fobbed off or chased away from there. So it's suggesting there's access to the underworld in that location, isn't it? Exactly. There, there has to be. That's what everyone um, says. And, and, and there's depictions. I'm sure there's depictions in caves there as well that you're probably not allowed to see. You're not allowed in any of the caves, according to them. I'm going to put this link so everybody can, they want to check it out. But I like his work and I really liked this video. Basically, you're not allowed anywhere except one cave not even the workers so how the hell would they know what's going on either remember brian forrester's video when he was over in egypt and there was an area uh, sectioned off they wouldn't let him go to have a look at same there same going on there you know there's things they don't want you to see until they've destroyed it <laughs> or buried it one or the other yep tommy he said, yes, great flood, 40 days and 40 nights of rain, 150 days of water flowing from the great deep. Yeah. And there is obviously something below because people have went down and seen underwater lakes and <laughs> really weird stuff in the ocean, other layers of water that they can't really get to. You know, different tales that I've heard. But yeah. Yeah, I'd be like that. It's probably some in UK. You know, they'll bomb the crap out of it, or could it, call it a military site to keep you off it. That's the usual scenario, isn't it? Make it a military base, and then it's off limits to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may not have been uh, worldwide, Tommy, but I uh, think the, the major nations clearly were affected for them to for us to be where we're at now you know yeah someone's, it probably, someone's, someone's took control and started telling a lot of lies and forcing that agenda it's never stopped i mean if i had to take a guess i you know and looking at the topography of our world i would say that something crazy occurred definitely on the east you know there's islands it's all broke up you can tell where there was there where there is land below the water still you know, when you get further into um, Europe and stuff and all that seems kind of solid for the most part. Africa has some low spots where water's still there on the east side. And then you get over into like the UK area. And I think, again, something, it affected that area because th those islands are all busted up and broken. Um, you can tell where they probably connected and stuff on like Ireland and over in the Scotland that, have similar features tell me that that was probably one area at one time the americas you can see water flows on the west side for sure um, the whole west coast has big water flows where you can tell it just ran down land just look around and you can tell the areas that were affected um, hawaii it's just one little island but there's all kinds of islands and other stuff around there <clears throat> yeah well there's another thing to consider but you know this flood what caused the flood you know um it seems if giants and titans were involved in this then they were clearly slain afterwards and it could be those one of the seas that caused this flood event you know if you think imagine it's all it's all <laughs> giants or, or titan fall into the sea it's going to cause a tidal wave somewhere it could have just been a scenario like that that set all this in motion and historically, humans are involved in finishing off giants. Now, your dinosaur bones, what they say the dinosaur bones, are probably giant bones. Did you, you notice that the Smithsonian's been removing all the giants from museums and still obviously hiding them and storing them somewhere. So they're trying to, they're trying to hide our past, our history. You know, if you hide the history, you can, you can tell lies for anything. It's the same with the, you know, the map and the grid we're using. The globe was clearly invented to hide the 12 gates from scripture, is what our research is finding. And if you want to see, if you want to put that to the test, full exploration, go east, go to the sunrise and see where it's coming from. If it's coming around the globe, you'll notice. If it's getting projected through the ground, it's got to rise up from the ground somewhere and it will get noticed. 
So that's mm -hmm. how you that's how you hide the twelve gates from scripture. You invent a globe, which we know doesn't work. Yeah. Yep. On the globe, we are just the center of that grid. You know, we see very very little. There's a whole lot of miles missing. <laughs> Look at that, we've done. A rectangle wide, a mile wide glacier found by NASA completely flat. Yeah, it sounds like, heli sounds like helicopters and lasers have been busy, doesn't it? I would say they are fake, the Dead Sea, Dead sea Scrolls, Jason. I think other people's debunked them previously. But yeah, I would say they're fake because, you know, they're trying to say Israel is the, is the Israel country. When you look at this research, it's telling you Israel is the name of the realm, not a country. It's the name of this whole realm. Now, read the scripture again and take that into account, and it's going to give you a completely different story. You hide the real Israel and invent a fake one, a country called Israel. That's not the Israel from scripture. Watch our 12 Gates video and you'll see why. There he has. It shows you the list of subjects we've looked at to get to our conclusions as well. You know, we've looked at scriptures, Book of Enoch, Geopetra and hieroglyphs, Nazca lines. Um, what else we've got one? <laughs> All of our of real world data. data also. Events. World data, yeah. We've studied earthquakes and volcanoes and when they erupt and how and planets and alignments of planets and earth energy, ley lines. How do the planet alignments Seas. affect that stuff? See, tides, winds, lightning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big lift, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. On top and of probably, it. Uh, probably some stuff we forgot as well. Oh, halos. <laughs> yeah, I was about to Halo. say, looking at the sky, capturing this kind of stuff. Yeah, Mel's got it right. The elite are attacking written history in a last-ditch attempt to continue the lie. Yeah. I'll yeah, read them more. Agree. Well said, Mel. No. Because <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah, how could we forget halos? <laughs> I know. Well, keep them coming, Hello. guys. Du jour, welcome. Hey, du jour. Talking about halos today. Ah, that's a, that's that's not a giant then, Tommy. That's a dwarf. That is fifteen foot. That's nothing. <laughs> that one can't have been involved in building anything. Maybe he carried a few bits of wood here and there. He's not one of the original builders. The original builders. You're talking megalithic kind of size. I think we had different size ones. I think there were the original very large ones, and I think that as they diluted, however that happened, <laughs> they um, probably got smaller. With those uh, dodgy the ones that came from the West. <laughs> the Jimbo scared as well. Yeah, yeah, and Jimbo says there's different kinds from different um, directions. And don't forget about the little people. There was little people found, bones found in America. Little tiny people bones. Yeah, all shapes and sizes it seems. Including I would basically, dragons. Including I dragons. Just, <laughs> yeah, dragons. I mean, dragons. I would really say all the old stories are probably true at this point. What they call legends and Tales and <laughs> I would have to say that um, there might be a little bit of weight to those stories. The bones being found of giants and little people and animals that be dragons in the land. And yeah,
But yeah, any questions on Halo's guys, just put them in the chat there and we'll try and answer them today. If not, it'll be in an, another video. Yeah. The stories came down from ancestors. So, do you have anything else to add? No, nah, that's it for me, one really. I'm going to have to get some no, stuff for me you now, anyway. Okay. Nobody has any questions? I think we're going to wrap it up for today. So, I want to thank everybody for coming in and, you know, having a fun chat. Yeah, thanks, all. And up there, uh, we explained them a bit more to you that weren't sure what they were. <laughs> FPD, how high does the plane go? I think you would have to ask series that going on series is uh, magnetic data. We'll ask him next time we catch up with him. No worries. We'll have another one again. One day or two, we'll yeah, I think it's uh, really gets one of the series because he's probably got the best data to answer that question. Yeah, I agree. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Yeah, cheers, everyone. We'll catch you again. See you in a bit.